Thou art the potter, I am the clay. Mold me and make me after Thy will. I welcome you all today in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, who is the resurrection and the life. We thank Gregson and Waite for this very lovely venue. This is beautiful. I mean, there's not too many where you just look out and see these beautiful trees. And it's um, so thank you very much for uh, the venue. Thank you for all of you that have come from near and far to this special service of celebration as we remember the life and reflect on the passing of our dear sister in Christ, Lena Lisa Inkeri Laukinen. I don't know if I've pronounced that properly. <laughs> My finish isn't too crash hot. Our dear friend, brother, husband, father, Pavo, better known as Pavarotti, and um, Christine, daughter Christine, and David, husband, Daniel, and Whitney, and Callum. So, <laughs> so um, lovely to have you all here with us. And uh, this will be a very special service, it's going to be divided into two parts. We've got our brother here, Pastor Hakey, will be do doing, um, having a part to play in the message as well. To all of you friends, relatives, a very, very special blessing. We remember in our prayers that all those that have been impacted by her life in some way and some more than others. And relatives and friends, thank you for your attendance here today. Lena will leave a vacuum in our hearts, but we do know that she's with the Lord, for to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. So let's come before the Lord in prayer, for he is the God of all comfort and all consolation. Lord, we praise you that you are the resurrection and the life, and whoever believes in you, though they were dead, dead in trespasses and sins, yet shall they live. And whosoever lives and believes in you shall never die. We thank you, Father, for the life of Lana, who's blessed each and every one of us here today in some way. 
I thank you, Father, that you will be with a husband, Pavo, daughter Christine, and grandchildren, Daniel, Callum, Whitney, brother Marco, and wife Rita, and all of us here today who are mourning her passing, as well as those in other places in Finland and wherever Lena has been and impacted so many people with a beautiful personality and her love for you. But Father, we thank you that she's now with you in a land where there is no more pain, no more tears, no more sorrow, for all the former things have passed away. So Father, bless all those that have come to this service today. And Father, we remember the prayer that you taught your disciples to pray by saying, and let's pray this prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. Friends, let's stand to sing our opening song, one that I'm sure everybody knows. You have it there on your order of service, Amazing Grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found, was blind, but now I see. Let's stand to sing. Sweet the sound that saved a wreck like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. Twas grace that taught. be seated. Eulogy comes from the Greek word, a word to bless, a word to cheer, a word to encourage. And so we're going to be blessed now. And this is just a snapshot of um, Lena's life and um, compiled by Christine and Pavo. So Lena's got, um, eulogy is going to be read first by um, Verena, my wife, and then David, uh, Christine's husband, will also come and share. Thanks, Verena. (laughs) 
Psalm 139, 13 to 14. For thou hast possessed my rinds, thou hast covered me in my mother's womb. I will praise thee, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are thy works, and that my soul knoweth right well. And here are the words of Christine. My mother, Lena Laukanen. I don't think anyone really knows where to begin when you want to talk about the life of someone, but I'll start where I knew Lena from, which was early 19th, the 1970s, when I had booked a womb with her for the duration of approximately nine months, although I did decide to vacate a couple of weeks earlier than I was supposed to. And as I have little memory of those very early times, I'm recording accounts told to me, so let's just assume that all the good things are absolutely true and the not so good things could be slightly exaggerated. Mom was always worried about me as I wasn't a good eater when I was little, and she recalled this to me about 30 years later, pondering why she had been so worried, because here I still was, I had survived. I guess it wasn't easy because my brother had been born with the umbilical cord wrapped around his neck and suffered brain damage and had some develop, developmental brain de, de, developmental issues when growing up, so I think while mom was pregnant with me, all sorts of thoughts and worries would have gone through her head, as it did with me when I was pregnant for the first time. You never think about what our mothers worry and fret over until we become mothers ourselves. Mom was a talented woman. Some, something I never fully caught of her, as she played guitar when she was young, played the piano, and when I moved to Australia and I was born, Mom was our fashion house, as she sewed and knit most of our clothes. When I was little, Mom often made me a matching outfit to whatever she had made herself. I guess that was a great way of making use of the material that was left over and as I was little, a small cushion-sized amount of material was only needed to make something for me. Mom also would bike and cook, which I did learn to do as well, but I never inherited the patience gene. So there are so many things that I wished I could do like she did, but only if I could learn it instantly. One thing I did inherit from mom was a love for flying and traveling. We had always figured we must have some gypsy blood in us because we never knew who her grandfather was and had been told it was possibly Russian or Romanian gypsy. So we said it has to be gypsy blood because we love travel. Our family did many trips to Finland and as Timo, and I got older. Mom did some solo trips overseas to visit family in Finland and Canada. And also right up until 2010, when Mom and I went to Finland together to visit family. Mom had also worked for ANSET Airlines back in the days for around 20 years, cleaning the aircraft and some weekends I would go and help her. Our relationship was probably a pretty typical one that any mother and daughter has, and we most certainly had our moments as well. I went through a phase in my teenage years where I was a typical horrible sulky teen, and my mom recalled those years to be from around the age of 13 to 15. There were time, times that, at times, mom probably didn't find find it funny at all, but now we would probably laugh about it. One example was a time when my friend Tula was over, and we must have annoyed mom some, 
something chronic because she tries to stand the hallway with a pair of scissors in hand while Tula and I ran screaming into the bathroom. We locked ourselves in for what seemed like 10 minutes but was probably only two. We slowly unlocked the door and peeked out to see if we could make our escape only to be met with mom's face and scissors in hand and for those who have seen the movie The Shining, if you picture Jack Nicholson's face peering through the bathroom door, that's the kind of scene this was. Tula and I screamed and slammed the door shut and stayed in the bathroom for a very long time. During my later teenage years, mom had an uncanny sense of timing and would wake up 10 to 15 minutes before I got home. So sneaking home at whatever time of the early morning hours were impossible because she would be awake, sometimes scaring me half to death when I opened the front door and she'd be standing there in the dark to greet me often with a cranky off to bed with you voice. When I turned 20, Mom and I did a huge road trip to New South Wales and Queensland. We drove almost 8,000 kilometers in total over a few weeks, not long after I had brought my first, bought my first proper car. I don't remember any dramas on the trip, except that Mom had a habit of making a shocked sound if she thought a crash was going to happen which was all the time. So I had to practically yell at her to stop doing that or we would, would actually crash. Mom became a grandmother a few months before her 52nd birthday to Daniel and again when she was 55 to Callum. We lived so far away, but every year Mom and Dad and Timo would travel up to see us. I don't think Daniel and Colm will ever fully understand how precious they were in their mummy's eyes because they were the only grandchildren she had. By the time I became a mother, I could understand what being a mother is and how and now could also see and understand what mom told me when I was young that I couldn't understand until I became a mother myself. Mom and I had become best friends by this stage and would spend each week or fortnight on the phone for a couple of hours. In recent years, Mom got me talk, talked into Skyping with her, which we would do every Saturday, which was usually between an hour and two, and often ended up being a show, a show and tell, especially if one of us had been shopping and got new clothes or shoes. We also had often done clothes swaps and I still have some of mom's clothes at home. And she has some of mine in clothing. I can't say I was the model daughter and I know I disappointed and fought with my mom many a time, but I don't know that one thing that, ne and, but I know that one thing that never dies is a mother's love for her child. And a mother and daughter are not only mother and daughter, they become sisters and best friends all in one. If I have to guess what mom's proudest moment of, of me would be, would be re only recent and last year when I was born again baptized and that I too would finally be reunited one day with her in heaven. I know that she never ceased praying for that day to come and I know that she spent most of my life praying for me. Mom's passing was a huge shock to us all and we just never know when it is our time to go. Only God knows when our time is is coming, so it is vitally important to have our eternal state sorted while we, we still can. Christ died and rose and was victorious over death, so we may have eternal life with him. If you believe that and trust in him, repent and turn from your sins, and you can have the assurance of eternity with our Lord and all those who lived before us as believers to be forever in his presence. 
as my brother Timo used to say to me often when he was alive. It was, are you ready? Yeah, Lena was certainly ready. She often talked with excitement about the rapture, about Christ's second coming, and heaven. I will miss my beautiful friend very much. But knowing that I will meet her one day again, that comforts me. Lena Lisa Inkere Laukene. She's joined our Father in heavenly home. We're blessed to have been part of her life and to have the assurance that we will one day meet again. Lena was loved and treasured by those who were fortunate enough to have her touch their lives in many, many ways. She was wife, mother, Sister, grandmother, and confidante. She impressed us all with her charm, her patience, and her intelligence. She was a devoted wife to Pavel, whom she married on the 5th of June, 1965, in Toyala, and had the ceremony the next day, because the magistrate wouldn't marry them on a Sunday, and the only other people there to marry them were Lutheran pastors, but they wouldn't. They weren't Lutheran. What was Martin Luther thinking? Together they raised two amazing children and she impressed upon each of them the values of family first and the strong morals by which they lived. Morals based in her beliefs, faith and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. Her two grandchildren were very special to her and a source of pride and great joy. A valuable lesson that she modelled for her family was her contentment and positivity in what, whatever the situation was. She made life work with what she had, successfully raising a family on a limited budget at times and always having plenty to go around. Never was there any envy nor a want for what she did not have. She had the Lord. It was her ability to appreciate the simple pleasures in life and to find joy in most situations that put her in a class of her own. Many admired her because of her gentle manners. Although that scene from The Shining does sort of change things a little there. And the way she delicately spoke about others. And Lena was never one to raise her voice. And she did have a special thing when she was surprised though, or caught off guard in some way. Whew, that was what she said. Lena showed her love in a very practical way. She lovingly taught her children that to be strong, tenacious, use their intelligence, be determined and to work hard. The strength of that is in the way Christine has been since her mother was called. Lena always welcomed me and treated me like part of the family. She warmed my heart and made me feel extra special. When Christine and I were married, she let, her great, let out a grateful, finally, and gave me a bear hug that was so unexpected that I thought for a moment that our photographer was, go was going to have a lot of uh, Im images that were going to be very hard to explain whilst we were both on the ground. That would have been quite nice to share with her. we we'll just have to wait to tell her all about it. Lena will be remembered by those who knew and loved her for, for her admiration of the Lord and her faithfulness to church, her love for family, her compassion for others, and her independent nature. Her somewhat not so good Facebook skills, although they were improving, such as, an, uh, such as on, online jokes, however, were often lost in the translation. I'm grateful for the time that we spent together and the laughter that we shared, and look forward to the day that we will meet again. Finally, I'd like to remind you of Psalm 84, verse 6. Who passing through the valley of Barca make it a well, the rain also filleth the pools. 
you have to recall, remember that the word Bacha is actually a Hebrew word for weeping. And, and the Bacha Valley was often used as pilgrims as they passed um, on their way to Jerusalem in their pilgrimage. This is a pilgrimage that Lena has gone through and she has now passed on to the Lord. It's all well for us to live, uh, stay in the valley of uh, Bacha as often as we want. The, the pools there will be filled by the Lord as well. But we need to move forward. And as we move forward, we do so in loving memory of Lena Lisa in Laukana. May the God, Lord bless this gentle woman and her gentle soul. She will be missed. Thank you. Thanks, David. Thanks, Verena. And I think we must have gypsy blood too because we moved 25 times. And we did a bit of a family tree thing and found on Dad's side we were lords and earls of castles in Switzerland back to the 13th century. But then on Mum's side we got gypsies, gypsies all down the lines. I thought, I wonder. <laughs> That's why we'd be moving. So, yeah, welcome to the, the gypsies line. But thank you so much for that. What a blessing to hear some snapshots of Verena's life. Sorry, <laughs> Lena's <laughs> life. Sorry, Lena and Verena were always so close. They're always on the phone together. They're always on Instagram and Messenger, I don't know, every night before Verena would go to bed, Lena would um, text her all the time and talk to her. So I was always hearing Lena. <laughs> so thanks for that. It gives me great pleasure now to call on a dear brother and Pastor Hakey who will bring us the reading from God's word and also share some thoughts from that passage. Thank you, Pastor Hakey. Thank you, Reverend Dan. Firstly, I want to extend our heartfelt condolences from the whole church back in Brisbane. I know that they would have loved to be here, but due to distance and age, uh, not many could come here. But uh, our love and prayers are with you and has been with you. We've been remembering you all in, in prayer. I also want to extend my thank you to uh, Reverend Dan and uh, your wife, like Aleda would call you, Verena, uh, for taking care of Lena and Pavo and the family. It gave me a great comfort and a blessing when I heard that uh, Lena and Pavo had found a home church locally. And not just a church, but good uh, pastors as well. So thank you for your love and support all the time. It came to us as a shock uh, and it affected the whole uh, Finnish community. Uh, like, uh, what? What? No, surely not. But uh, our God, Lord, never makes mistakes. We don't understand the time frame of our lives all. And many of us came to that conclusion we really only have today to live. Yesterday is gone. We don't know about tomorrow. We need to be ready 24-7. Apostle uh, Paul wrote in his second letter to 
Young or younger Timothy. Interesting thought and passage in chapter 4. When he suddenly said that the time has come for me, for my departure. And he was not going to hop on a ship or, you know, just travel to another location. He understood that uh, his time was up here on earth. Then he continued and said that I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. Now there is in store for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will award to me on that day, and not only to me, but also to all who have longed for his appearing. This passage or thought came to me when I thought about our beloved friend, Lena. The faith factor. It's like Paul says and says that I have kept my faith. And faith to Lena, like the power also to family and to us, I hope, was not just some uh, religious concept that was used once a week. Faith was a style of living. It was life. Faith, when it came to salvation, that faith that we have Savior, Jesus, who died on the cross for my sins, and I have accepted him as my Savior. That was the kind of faith what Lena had. It was not just uh, practicing some duties occasionally, but she lived that out on a daily basis. And uh, may I add uh, that uh, her faith, to me anyway, was very strong faith. If you asked her, she would, of course, say, no, 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 I'm only a weak person. Faith also was part of her everyday life in the form of prayer and also a trusting God in every situation. Often we might think that only if I had more faith, that would maybe take away the problems. But I believe that the real biblical faith is actually uh, something that will help us go through the problems. And that's what uh, our Sister Lena had in difficult moments, in sicknesses, in a moment when the family lost, you know, their son, Timo. I thought about that the other day. Now, Timo and Mum are celebrating together. They are in a place when there is absolutely no more pain, no more tears, no more battles, no more prayer requests. Everything has been made perfect. I can only try to imagine what's it like with my mind. I, ca I can't even imagine what is perfect, but I believe it's something perfect. <laughs> so this was the kind of uh, faith what they had and Lena had in a moment when there was outwardly thinking no hope, but always had hope in God. This faith also gave them assurance and gave Lena that sense of peace 
which they talked about a lot. That's what uh, Power told me last Sunday, that uh, lately they had been talking a lot about heaven, their destiny. We are all here on temporary visa anyway. This is not our permanent place of residence, but in heaven. Like Asaph in Psalm 73, when he tried to figure out you know, the problems and justice in this life. How come God is blessing others more? You know, I try to be a good Christian. You know, I try to be spiritual. And I feel like I need to go through difficulties. Every day and every morning I'm going to get punished. But he said, it was so hard for me to understand till I entered into the presence of God, into the sanctuary of God. And he said, I understood the destiny. I understood the destiny of those who don't care about God, who don't have this faith in God. But I, he also understood his destiny, that if I keep my faith in Jesus, like he said, as long as I have you in my life, I don't really care about anything else here on earth. They understood the destiny. And that was a kind of faith Elena had. Understood her destiny. She knew that when the time of her departure comes, she's going to be taken home to be with her, her Savior to, and taken home really a place that the Lord himself had prepared. And she's now experiencing and her faith has changed into seeing she was able to trust her life, her spirit, into the hand of God. And like it says in Psalm 23, And now I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. May her life be an inspiration to us all. Lena doesn't really worry about us anymore. She's with the Lord. But it's to us here. We are still on journey, guys. We still have today. Let her life be an inspiration to you and to me to put our life in the hand of God. Have him as our savior. Have him as the uh, foundation of my faith, knowing that when I go, you know, I'll be taken home. God bless you all. And especially you, Pablo and Christine, and the boys and the family, and everybody, relatives, friends. He is our God of all comfort. Amen. Amen. Bless you. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor Hakey. I know um, Lena always enjoyed going to the Finnish church, and every year, Christmas time, uh, uh, Verena and I would drive down with uh, Pavo and Lena and we would enjoy all those good Finnish delicacies. So um, can't remember what they were called, but I just know that they were good. They went down the hatch real well. <laughs> well, the last song that, uh, Ver that uh, was sung at um, church two Sundays ago by Lena... The last one we finished off was with was titled Because He Lives. God sent his son, they called him Jesus. He came to love, heal, and forgive. He bled and died to buy my pardon. An empty grave is there to prove my Savior lives. And Lena's testimony was certainly one that Jesus is alive and she lived him out in her life. Let's stand to sing Because He Lives. I can face tomorrow. His son, they called him Jesus. He came to love, heal, and.
forgive. He bled and died to buy my pardon. An empty grave is there to prove my Saviour lived. Because he lived, I can face tomorrow. Because he lived, all oh, fear is gone. Because I know he holds the future, and life is worth the living just because he lived. Sweet to hold a new. Feel the pride and joy he gives, but greater still, the calm assurance this child can face and certain day because he is lived. I can face tomorrow because he lived. All fear is gone because I know he holds the future and life is worth the living just because he lived. Then one day, across that river, I'll fight life's final war with pain. And then as death gives way to victory, I'll see the lights of glory and I'll know he reigns. Because he lived, I can face tomorrow. Because he lived, all oh, fear is gone. Because I know he holds the future. And life is worth the living just because he lives. Please be seated. I'd like to read one verse out of this wonderful book that we all know is the B-I-B-L-E. Yes, that's the book for me. God's Holy Word, 66 books, a library of books in one book, and its author is divine, who is the Lord God himself. It is the God-breathed Word of God, and Jesus said that heaven and earth will pass away, but his Word will never, never, never pass away. God has spoken. And one verse that speaks volumes of Lena's life is found in the book of Philippians, chapter 1 and verse 21, where Paul writes, For me to live is Christ and to die is, is gain. For me to live is Christ and to die is gain. The grass withers the flower thereof fades away, but the word of the Lord endures forever. Father, bless this word, we pray. May it speak to our hearts, comfort our hearts, challenge us. We praise you and thank you. And hide me behind the cross. May in this place Jesus and he alone be seen and be glorified. But we ask it in Jesus' name and for his sake. Amen. I have a number of F words that I've
come up with and it's only going to be brief so it's not going to be long and it'll dovetail brother what you've shared there in um, 2 Timothy chapter 4 6 to 8 so there's a number of F words uh, very briefly her faith we've already heard about that from our dear pastor her family her friends her food fashion and future so there's a number of good F words so her faith Lena loved the Lord. She had her Finnish Bible well-worn. Now, well-worn, that's, that's a good sign, isn't it? Obviously, today, with our modern technology, we have it on our iPhones and iPad, and she had it there as well. But I did see her Finnish Bible, well-worn, well-read. Verena and I were invited around to Pavo and Lena's many times. And we'd always get to talk about the Lord. So yeah, food and all those other things were important, but it was always the Lord. And uh, we finished off on. It was constructive talk. And as you know, Lena certainly had the gift of the gab, didn't she? I mean, she could talk, wow. But it was constructive talk. So, Brother Pavo, sorry, but she did make up for you. Because <laughs> you yourself have said, Brother, that you are a man of few words. So, Lena has made up for you. But what came out of her mouth was constructive, good and healthy. She loved the church, but she was always cold at church. <laughs> so... I can't ever recall Lena saying that she feels warm, so we, uh, we did leave a special blanket with Lena, although now she's no longer here. <laughs> she's in heaven, so she's, all, she's got um, everything is perfect temperature up there. But no, she was always feeling the cold weather. And, um, but of course the fins of their saunas, so she felt at home in a sauna didn't she, Pavo? But she loved church and she had a very warm heart. Whenever Verena and I would want to leave your place and we're invited around there many, many times, I'd say, we have to go now. And Lena would say, but it's still so young. The night's still so young, it's only... 10 o'clock, around 10 o'clock. <laughs> so Lena's is the night owl and Brother Pavo here, you would be going to bed around 9.30 and um, Lena, midnight or later, she is the night owl. But she loved the Lord. She was a child of the King and the Lord, love of the Lord shone out of her heart to not only us here, but she was also on the internet with her brother Michael and Rita and, and other Finnish friends over in, in Finland and um, Canada and other places. She was an evangelist. She loved to get the word out. And to her Finnish friends in Brisbane, all over the place. She wasn't perfect but she loved the Lord and that certainly was manifested in her life. She also loved family and friends. Lena loved her family, first and foremost Pavarotti, when you serenaded her so long ago. Oh, lo, solo mio, rio, and you were there at the window and melted her heart so long ago. 60, uh, 50, how many years you've been? 50, 54 years. So probably, what, 55 years ago was when you first sang that song to her. And we remember Timo, whom the Lord took home when he was just 46 years of age. Their beloved daughter, Christine, and of course their, their grandchildren, Daniel and Callum. And of course... Lena loves to talk with you, Christine. And as you shared, as we heard today, the eulogy 
that mother and daughter bond so precious. But she changed. I could see a difference in her eyes. Christine, when you became a Christian, when you committed your life to Jesus Christ, she's different. And she said, oh, this is great. I can go home to be with the Lord now. Praying, waiting for you. A little longer. <laughs> she could have waited. Well, the Bible says our times are in his hands. They're not our time. So the Lord is the one who says time's up. She loved her family, loved her friends. But Jesus was the subject that she loved to talk about. And we were so blessed the day when Pavo and Lena rocked up at our church and it was through Stan and Dawn who lived opposite their home. And um, yeah, all of a sudden you guys came to church and wow, that was wonderful. Over those um, four years, three to four years, whatever it was, and Stan and Pavarotti have sung a number of songs together over the years and uh, we've been so blessed to have you sing for us and hopefully you'll continue to sing for us, Pavarotti and Brother Stan here as well. So um, Pavo's hit the charts at Mount Isa, number one in Christian Community Church as well with some number one hits. So what a blessing, what a blessing you both are to us. And Lena, of course, her testimony and witness lingers on. She also loved food and fashion. And as I just shared with you, we're often invited around to your home and we would have the lovely Finnish bulla and uh, runeberry something, pie. Torto, yeah, well, <laughs> yeah, it sounds interesting, but I tell you what, it tastes better, and it was so, so good, and Verena and I, because you guys lived up, living up on the hill, we would just roll down the hill home, but we always felt so refreshed, and um, incidentally, I did have a bit of that buller the other day when I was at your place, it was... Very, very good. Lena loved sweets. She had a sweet tooth, or may I add many sweet teeth, <laughs> like me. And um, every time we met Lena, she would always have something good to give to us, to take home with us. But more importantly, it was the sweetness of fellowship we had as we sat around the table and enjoyed one another's company. And of course, at church on a Sunday after church, you would all um, join in and people would be refreshed by the company of Lena and Pavo. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Yes. But Lena also loved fashion. She loved jewellery and looking pretty. And she always looked glamorous. Always looked, yeah, like with all the lovely bags and shoes and clothes and very, very nice. She looked after herself, dressed elegantly. But more importantly, she was dressed in the righteousness of Jesus Christ in his robe of righteousness. And friends, unless we have his robe of righteousness, we will not be accepted in heaven because it's grace. We're saved by grace. We're not saved by anything that we can do. And Leanna knew that. And what about her future? Where is she now? Well, we've seen the body. So Leanna is lying there, but it's, it's just the the shell, the outer part of who she really was. Her spirit's gone to be 
with the Lord. And the Bible says there's only one or two places. And I know people don't like to hear about it, but it's not what I say. It's what God's word says. God's word says there is a hell. And you don't go there because you're bad, because we're all bad. We've all been born bad. You go there because you bypass the cross. And you say, no, Jesus, I don't want you in my life. I want to live for myself. I want to do what I want. So two places, hell or heaven. And Lena has now gone to be with the Lord. To be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. That's where she is now because she, has a re she had a relationship with Jesus Christ and that's what it's all about. When I married Verena, the minister said, will you take this woman to be your lawful wedded wife, to have and to hold from this day forward in times of sorrow and happiness, sickness and hell, to love always and to be faithful to until death you do part. And I just said two words, I do. That's all. It's a relationship. I do. When you come to Jesus, you say, I do to him. I do. I do. I will take you into my life. I will call upon your name. I will confess my sins and get right with you. Elena did that. And she's now with her Lord. No more tears. No more pain. She's at the feet of Jesus. And with Timo, she's got a mansion over the hilltop, not only up in Budrum, but over the hilltop in a beautiful land. Heaven is a beautiful place filled with glory and grace because the glory of Jesus is reflected there. So are you ready to meet the Lord when you die? Because we've all got to go one day. It's a fact of life. One day, we're all going to go the way of the earth unless the Lord comes back, but either we go, we die, or we go to be with the Lord when he comes in the air. But we all do have to die one day. And we need to be ready, because the Bible says, Behold, I show you a mystery. We'll not all sleep, but we'll all be, we'll be changed in a moment in a twinkling of an eye. At the last trumpet, the trumpet shall sound, the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. We shall be changed. That's the hope for the Christian. We, we go to meet the Lord to be with him forever and ever. So that's a wonderful hope we have and nobody can take that hope from us. Nobody could take that hope from Lena. And she could say, like Paul did to the church at Philippi, for me to live is Christ and to die is gain. Amen. Friends, we're now going to have a slide presentation of Lena's life. Thank you. None. 
to thy shore Just to close the walk with thee Grant it, Jesus, hear my plea Daily walking close to thee Let it be, dear Lord let it be Some glad morning when the slap is over Just a few more weary days and then I'll fly away To a land where joy shall never end I'll fly away Oh, I'll fly away your glory I'll fly away When I I'll fly away. Well, she's in that wonderful place. And, um, you know, Brother Pavo was just sharing with me the other day that he had a dream. And he dreamt that Lana was telling him to do something and he couldn't for the life of him remember what it was. So, Brother, every night you go to, before you go to sleep, take your little notepad out and have your pen ready to write down. But she's in a better place. She's in a land where there are no more tears, no more pain. When we all get to heaven, what a wonderful day that will be. Let's stand to sing. Sing the wondrous love of Jesus. Sing his mercy and his grace in the mansions bright and blessed. He'll prepare for us a place. <laughs> the wondrous love of Jesus, sing his mercy and his grace. In the mansion, bright and blessed, he'll prepare for us a place. When we all get to heaven what a day of rejoicing that will be when we all see Jesus we'll sing and shout the victory while we walk the pilgrim pathway clouds will overspread the sky but when traveling 
days are over, not a shadow, not a sigh. When we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be. We all see Jesus, we'll sing and shout the victory. Let's then be true and faithful, trusting, serving every day. Just one glimpse of Him in glory will the toys of life repay. When we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be. We all see Jesus, we'll sing and shout the victory. Onward to the prize before us, soon His beauty will be all. Soon the pearly gates will open, we shall tread the streets of gold. When we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be. We all see Jesus, we'll sing and shout the victory. Father, we thank you. We thank you, thank you, thank you that you've given us your precious daughter, Lena. We thank you for her, for her life, for her testimony, for her witness. And we thank you that she is now with you forever in that wonderful land where we never grow old. Where eye has not seen nor ear heard and neither has entered into the heart of man the things that God has prepared for those who love him. So thank you for your comfort on the family, friends and all of us here today. And we now commit the body of Lena Lisa Inkari Laukanen to you. Dust to dust and ashes to ashes, awaiting the hour in which all that are in the grave shall hear his voice and come forth, they that have trusted in Jesus to eternal life and they that have rejected Jesus, the Son of God, to eternal judgment. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you shalom peace. Amen. Amen. God bless.
I travel all life's pathway I know not what life shall hold as I wander hopes grow fonder precious memories flood my Sacred scenes unfold